What can you do when CPAP doesn't work? For Susie and her husband Fred, one change made all the difference. This is their story. Let's take a look. G'day mates, Susie is a member on our Facebook group. If you'd like to join that group, click the link above. And this is her post. Anyone using an ASV machine and doing well. My husband has complex apnea, is on lower dose oxys, has had major nasal brain surgery to take out an aggressive cancerous tumor and radiation. He's okay now, thank God. He graduated from CPAP to BiPAP four to five months ago and still isn't doing well. His apnea hypopnea index is usually in the 20s to 30s and the last two weeks in the 50s. And then last night with eight hours use, a new mask and new prescribed pressure in the 60s. Yesterday I cried so hard for him. He's been through so much and I hope he doesn't quit. I surely hope he gets an ASV. Wow, what a story. Susie and Fred, sounds like you guys have been through a lot. Well, let's head over to Sleep HQ and check out your data and see exactly what's going on. So here we are on the dashboard at sleephq.com. And for those that don't know, this is my CPAP data analysis platform that I built with my best mate, Adam, and it's free. So if you'd like to use it to analyze your CPAP therapy, just click the link above. Crikey, check out this crazy high apnea hypopnea index. 77.53, that is enormous. And that's with therapy. Can you imagine what it must be without therapy? It must be well over 100, that's insane. Let's dive a bit deeper and see exactly what's going on. Why is this number so high? The goal is to try and get it less than five. We're a long way off that. Okay, so currently, the device is an Aircurve 10V Auto. So this is a ResMed BiPAP machine. First, let's take a look at the AHI Donut. This will give us a good idea as to what classifications of apnea are contributing to that high AHI number. Here it is here. So we have unclassified apnea, 9.19. This means the machine couldn't determine what type of apnea it was. Then we have obstructive apnea, 5.32. That's only a small amount. And then we have this great big green bar. What's this? Clear airway, 49.35. So we can see right here on the donut, the big problem here is the clear airway events. These are central apnea events. And we'll have a look at this in more detail now. Let's scroll down to the flow rate. And this is by far my favorite part of Sleep HQ. Having the ability to see every breath a patient takes through the night is just incredible and you just don't get this information on your My Air or your Dream Mapper app, which are quite basic. Now I can zoom in on the flow rate by clicking and dragging my mouse, like so, or I can also click Z as a hotkey on my keyboard. So you can see here at the start, Fred breathing in and out, in and out, and you can see with each breath, the amplitude gets smaller. His breathing starting to get shallow. See here, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the breathing just stops. It flatlines for about 20 seconds. There's no longer any airflow getting into or out of his lungs. And then he starts breathing again, thank goodness. But then the cycle repeats itself. Look, it happens again here and here. And if we zoom out, you will see this pattern just repeating nonstop hundreds of times through the night. Have a look how many events there are. Let's quickly zoom back in again because there's one more thing I wanna show you here. Now, just above the flow rate, the breathing, is the therapy pressure levels. All right, you can see this green line here. And what you can see is that it's very stable. Even though this device is an automatic BiPAP machine, that will vary the pressure automatically. You can see right here, it's behaving more like a CPAP machine at one fixed level of pressure. And you might be asking yourself, why is it doing that? Because we've got all these events. Sh shouldn't the machine be responding to the apnea, increasing the pressure? Well, no, and I'll tell you why. 
all these events here, CA, 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 are clear airway events, meaning the airway is open. It's not blocked like with obstructive sleep apnea. So increasing the pressure isn't going to change anything because we're not forcing air past any obstruction. The airway is open. Now, there's lots of different manifestations of central apnea, but they're all characterized by a lack of drive to breathe during sleep. And this results in repetitive, all these repetitive periods of insufficient ventilation and compromised gas exchange. So lots of different forms of central sleep apnea, but they all result in the same thing. Fred has a type of central apnea called Chainstokes respiration. And it's characterized by this very specific pattern that we're looking at right now, where you have this waxing and waning of the breathing. You can see here sort of shallow breaths in the start. They get larger in amplitude, then they get smaller in amplitude. Then you have the central apnea and the pattern repeats itself. You can see it right here, this wavy type pattern called Shane Stokes respiration, CSR. Let's scroll forward through the night just by clicking the right arrow on the keyboard. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. There's lots to talk about in this video. And uh, right here, something stands out, doesn't it? So we have all these green clear airway flags and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we have this OA, obstructive apnea flag, this yellow one right here. But it looks the same as the other ones and that's because it is. This here is what we call, excuse me, <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat, a false flag. It's not an obstructive apnea, it's a clear airway event. And let's have a look what happened with the pressure. So you can see here with the clear airway events, the pressure is remaining very stable, it's not moving much. And then all of a sudden it jumps from 14.48 up to 15.34 in response to this apnea event. Because as we know, with obstructive apneas, how do we treat them? we increase the pressure. But it was a false flag. It shouldn't have been increasing the pressure. It's really a clear airway event. And the point I'm trying to make here in a roundabout way is that whenever you have this complex apnea, chain stokes, respiration, central apneas, mixed apneas, unclassified apneas, complex apnea, the machine algorithms are hopeless, absolutely hopeless at auto titrating the pressure. So it's crystal clear. Fred's current device, the AirCurve 10 V Auto, is not suitable for his chain stokes respiration, a form of central sleep apnea. But let's see if anything changes when he switches from the AirCurve 10 V Auto to the AirCurve 10 ASV adaptive servo ventilator. Here we go. Holy shit balls! AHI 1.06 down from 77 on the V-Auto. Congratulations, guys, that is amazing. And check out the daily usage, 10 hours and 16 minutes. That's a damn good sleep. Let's scroll down and check out the flow rate. Here we go. All right, let's check out some of this breathing. Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty. Check that out. Have a look at this breathing. Nice and stable. Every breath, the same amplitude. What a difference this mode has made to Fred's therapy. Congratulations, guys. That is just awesome. And also, congratulations to ResMed. Those of you with a keen eye might have spotted something on this page that doesn't look quite right. Can you see what it is? You have this wonderful, stable, regular breathing. But then up here on the pressure trace, it's all over the place. It's up, it's down, it's everywhere. Now, normally... If you have nice stable breathing, the pressure trace is also nice and stable because there's no need to change the pressure if your breathing looks good, right? So what's going on? Well, would you like to know how ASV works? Of course you would, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let me break it down for you. Now, ASV is some complex stuff, but just bear with me and I'll try my best. So this top trace here is the flow rate. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And you might recall this distinctive pattern. This is the chain stokes respiration that we just looked at, this periodic breathing where you have these breathing pauses between this waxing and waning pattern, okay? 
Now, ASV can pick up on these patterns and it uses what's called minute ventilation to do so. Now, minute ventilation, without getting too specific, is basically the volume of air going into and out of your lungs per minute. This dashed line here is the targeted minute ventilation of the device. The device has a target, a set volume of airflow it's trying to achieve for the patient per minute. And the solid line is the patient's minute ventilation. So the machine has a target, and this is the information that the patient is giving the machine, this wavy line. Now, normally, someone who has stable, regular breathing will have a nice, flat minute ventilation because there's the same amount of air going into and out of the lungs per minute. But for someone with chain stokes respiration, we have this wavy pattern. And that's because when the patient's breathing, like they are here, the patient's breathing, all right, there's gonna be more volume of air. So the trace comes up. And then when the, the breathing stops or gets very narrow, the volume of air decreases. And so the minute ventilation drops. And then all of a sudden, <gasps> they're hyperventilating. And so the minute ventilation increases again. So you end up with this wavy pattern and this is something the machine can pick up on. And when it picks up on that, this is when it makes changes, customized changes to the therapy pressure levels to try and break that pattern from happening and even out the breathing as it's doing here. So we'll go down here to the therapy pressure. And the way it does this is with something called pressure support. And pressure support is the difference between IPAP, inhalation pressure, and EPAP, exhalation pressure. So if we have an IPAP of 10 and an EPAP of six, the difference is four, and that's the pressure support level, a pressure support level of four. If we increase that pressure support level, it really helps in ventilation, removing the carbon dioxide from the lungs. EPAP itself, really helps in oxygenation, bringing oxygen into the lungs and pressure support. The difference between IPAP and EPAP really helps in ventilation, removing the carbon dioxide. But it can use this pressure support, as you can see down here, to break that cycle. So you can see here the pressure support starts to increase in response to this wavy minute ventilation pattern. And then once again, it increases even further so the difference between the IPAP and EPAP is increasing. And look what it does to the minute ventilation line. It levels it out so that it reaches the target minute ventilation. I know that's a lot to take in, I, I do. It's complex for me as well, but that's the best I can do. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. A big thanks to Susie and Fred for letting me share their story today. What an incredible turnaround, guys. Congratulations to show my appreciation I'm sending you a REM sleep O2 ring, which you can use to monitor your blood oxygen level and your heart rate. Let's check what mine is. 94, 61 beats per minute, looking good. Now this ring is also gonna be integrated with Sleep HQ. So all that data from this ring will be integrated with your CPAP therapy data, which will be awesome. The take home message from today's video is this, central sleep apnea is very common. Around five to 10% of all people who have apnea have some form of central apnea. If you're someone who's really struggling to get your AHI number under control and you look at your Sleep HQ data and there's a lot of clear airway events, perhaps consider speaking with your specialist to see if ASV is suitable for you. Hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. If you did, give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, look after your mates, sleep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.